One of the most asked questions, possibly the most asked questions by atheists is, if God created everything, then who created God? Where did God come from? But even asking this question shows a fundamental lack of understanding about the nature of God and who Christians say God is on the part of the atheist. They don't even understand the Christian position that they are arguing against. So watch this short video that I'm about to play of a Christian explaining the nature of God in a way that most atheists have not even considered. Your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're thinking of the wrong, uh, obviously it displays that you're thinking of the wrong God, <laughs> because the God of the Bible d is not affected by time, space, or matter. If he's, if he's affected by time, space, or matter, he's not God. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. All of them have to come into existence at the same instant, because if there were matter but no space, where would you put it? If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. So you have time, space, matter created, a trinity of trinities there. Just, you know, time is past, present, future. Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously. And the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created this computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for... And the, the concept that a, of a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that form by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So, um, I, your, your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God, and that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping, that's for certain. So that's the God that I worship, thank you. So who created God? Where did God come from? In short, God is eternal, and he has always existed outside of space and time. He is not bound by the laws and restrictions of space and time. It is only the small human mind who tries to make God smaller by placing him within these limitations. The bottom line is that God has so plainly revealed himself in this universe through his word, through creation, through history, and also by placing his law on our hearts, in our conscience. He has revealed himself so definitively and unequivocally that to deny the knowledge of God, to deny his existence, is to deny the most fundamental aspect of reality. Atheists are not making a decision of the mind, but rather a decision of the heart. And it all comes down to this, for the one who does not want to believe, no explanation is possible. Now, I have previously spoken about the, the utter incomprehensible foolishness of atheism, the, the complete disregard for experimental science and plain reason. I talk about that more on the video that I'm gonna put up on the screen. Click on that to watch it. And friends, please consider subscribing if you wanna hear more strong biblical truth. Bless you, friends.